all be glad you didn't <laughs> hear what he just said before he hit record. Welcome back to a special episode of Hello, I'm a Listening. A spooky episode. Spooky. Oh, spooky episode. Spooky. What are going to tell you some scary stories? <laughs> I'm your host, Jack O'Lantern. And Big Dick Wifey. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to pick a spooky name. BDW. You're supposed Big to pick Dick a Boyfie. spooky name. I'm Big Jack O'Lantern. I'm an Irish. I'm an Irishman. Jack O'Lantern. Do you know that Halloween Jack started in Ireland? Yeah. You didn't know that. Yeah. By Dr. Jeffrey Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey O. Halloween. Yeah. No. Jeffrey O. Dr. Halloween. O. Dr. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a doctor. It was it's just his, his last name was yeah. O Doctor Halloween. O Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we didn't release an episode on Friday, so we thought let's release one on Monday, the thirty first. Yes, Halloween's on October. the thirty first. Also, oh my, we are finally out of the basement. I mean, right now we're in the basement. We always record the podcast in the basement, but we are finally out of the basement we're sleeping finally in our bedroom yay and for all the naysayers who said are you not going to make it up there in like until october it probably takes by it october. till november or like yeah by <laughs> or december like fuck you guys <laughs> fuck you <laughs> yes we are sleeping upstairs our bedroom is basically done with the exception of some furniture yeah. Our bathroom is done. Yep. We need a door on the room where the toilet is because they're yep. separate. Yeah. But otherwise, our kitchen comes tomorrow. Oh, today when you're listening, our kitchen comes. Yep. Yeah, it's exciting. Things are happening. Yep. So today, we are going to be sharing some stories that some of you have shared with us. Um, Not we would have loved to have some more. However, I did get a really good story and it's fairly long. So that'll take up some time and I think it's a good story. But let's maybe end with that one. <laughs> I have two short ones. <laughs> that's fine. I have a short one and a long one. That's what he said. I don't know how, but that's a thing. P like pet testicles. One is short, <laughs> short and one is long. long. <laughs> sure. Okay. So I got this story from... Uh, guy on Reddit, and it happened to his. Sorry, excuse me. <sighs> How dare you? Yeah. Um. So it happened to the aunt of this guy, and um. So this aunt had like this um, guy over who is like not a medium, but who has this little what is it called pendulum? A fortune teller? Nah. A pendulum. Yeah. Where you can. Um, it basically just starts swinging. No, no, no. It starts swinging and it tells you if there are energies and awesome. some people can basically tell you, okay, you shouldn't sleep here. Like because... a paranormal investigator? Nah, no. <laughs> Fucking listen to me. It's a pendulum and it's about energies. It has nothing to do with any paranormal stuff. Don't be so rude. No, Why I'm are you rude. so rude? I'm not rude. That was super rude. No, that was not rude. But you didn't listen to me. I did listen. I was trying to figure out the title of the person. I know that you're saying a pendulum. I know what a pendulum is. Yeah, I'm talking about the person's job. I'm trying to determine I, the name of no the person's job. job. There's no job. If it's a person not a job. came over to your house and performed that service, it's a job. <laughs> no, it's not a job. It's just something he or they do because they think they can do it well or they feel things. Mm -hmm. But it's not an official title. Nobody okay, does great. that officially. So... That aunt had that guy over and he came with this pendulum, but also with this thing that you can measure water. What is it called? Like I am the, not going to answer your questions now. <laughs> yeah, but this twig where they can find water. A, a twig is a, from a tree. Yeah, I know. Wünschelrute. It's called Wünschelrute in German. Wait. Wünschelrute. English. A dowsing. Does that make sense? No, I've never heard that before, but it doesn't matter. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, doesn't matter, but it's the same 
principle so it basically tells you if there are energies or even like water um things underneath your bed for example because apparently it's not good if you sleep under like a water source apparently so this guy came over and so he just walks all all through the rooms and just does his thing and um all of a sudden he stops and um looks out of the window and then he turns around and asks his aunt do you know that there like was an old gravesite inside your yard it's like, like she had a little yard in the garden and she's like no i had no idea and she's like yeah yeah he was like yeah, yeah there was like this old kelton grab kelton are like this older civilization here in Aust- in in central europe um and yeah uh, and she had no idea. Apparently, there was like this gravesite, like this really old gravesite from like the um, Middle Ages. Mm-hmm. And then he kept walking, kept walking, and then all of a sudden, he stopped in front of like this really old mirror. And he was like, "Where did you get that mirror?" And she was like, "Yeah, you know, I I think I bought it like this flea market at some point, and I just really liked it, and it fit." into the room so i yeah and he was like um you should probably hang something over it because things can pass through it like entities Mm -hmm. energies can pass through that and then he stops looks around the room and then he tells her that some things already passed through it and are in the house Mm -hmm. that's the end of the story why would this story end there because he didn't there's say anything else about what happened. No, did nothing anything? happened. But it was just creepy. That is I think, creepy. I think it's a creepy story. Yeah. That is creepy. Yeah. That's my longer story. <laughs> it's not that long. That's your longer story. Yeah, and then I have a very, very so- short little story. Okay, I yeah. have to open my thing now. Right up. So, sorry, guys, that was loud. So, I'm going to tell the short one now. And this one I actually find fascinating because, well, we'll talk about it after. Okay. I'm just trying to get the people Should into I the give mood. you the same thing you gave me? No, keep going. Okay. So, this one is from Mark on Instagram. Mark on Instagram. It goes like this. <laughs> I was on a holiday in France with my uncle and aunt. I must have been about 12. Can you read it like, like, can you read it as a rhyme? No. Okay. I was on a holiday in France with my uncle and aunt. I must have been about 12. They brought the mountain bikes with them and my uncle and I went out for a ride. We were going over the asphalt on a asphalt on a boulevard going down a hill really fast, probably around 60 kilometers per hour, which is really fast on a bike. That's 60s. really fast. Yeah. For example, that's a little faster than cars usually drive yeah. in towns and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's fast. When I blinked my eyes, I saw an iron chain that was blocking the road, but it looked like it was on a sandy or dirt road, not on an asphalt road like we were on. Mm -hmm. out of pure reflex i yelled to my uncle to stop we both stopped but there was nothing to see the path was clear we got back on our bikes and started cycling slowly kind of laughing about what had just happened but when we turned the corner the asphalt road was under construction and there it was an iron chain blocking a sandy dirt road it was at a height that we that if we hadn't stopped before going at the speeds we were going, we probably would have been killed. Wow. 22 years later, I can laugh about it, but my uncle can't even talk about it to this day. Oh, wow. That's, so, that's, that gave him chills. Oh, oh wow. So that one I find kind of interesting because it's not, it's I like wouldn't call it like a episodes. ghost story. No. But, it, I mean, it might be. We talked about episode. it then for a while because then it, it's like maybe to me that's like some sort of entity or something trying to save your life, you know, because he said he saw it clear as day, but then it wasn't there. 
And then they turn the corner and it's exactly what he saw. I mean, I ran over a street once as a young child. And for some reason, I just stopped in the middle of the roll. So, no, basically what happened is I wanted to cross the road. On the one lane, the car stopped, but I couldn't see to the other lane. Mm -hmm. So I ran and then just, I don't know why, I stopped in the middle of the road mm -hmm. and the car just... Mm -hmm drove pa by so fast and if i would have kept running i would have been dead mm -hmm. and there was no reason nobody said hey, stop or nobody yeah. said oh there is a car coming i just stopped yeah but that's why i think this story is so crazy because he actually saw something when he blinked and he saw mm -hmm. the thing that was coming around the corner before he could even actually see it and he saw the dirt road he saw yeah, this charmed whole thing. sight even though he was on asphalt the whole time i find it so fascinating have you seen charmed no there's Phoebe, and she can see the future. Mm -hmm. She has like this visions when something's bad or something is happening that it um, surrounds her. Mm -hmm. She sees things. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's a good show. <laughs> Don't you have another one? Yeah, I have another one. So that's thanks, like, Mark, for your story. That's um, it's not uh, it's a real story, but um, nowadays it's more like a folklore. Mm -hmm. And it happened in Kärnten, in Aust like in, like in the south of Austria, and it was like the seventies. And this younger woman was like on this, was basically a bar or like a little hut up in the mountains, and she celebrated there. She had a few drinks, and, um, you know, late at night she wanted to go home. And so she walked through the dark to her car and all of a sudden something really weird, a weird, weird noise um, was very loud behind her. She mm -hmm. turned around, nothing. But with panic, she ran to the car, locked the doors and uh, raced home basically, yeah. Um, now it gets creepy. So... She gets out of the car in her garage and there's a light on and she hears something drop. Mm -hmm. And she looks down and three bloody fingers fell down onto the ground. What? Yeah. So someone tried to stop her from closing the door and she f flinked the door as fast as possible and oh, cut yeah. three fingers off in the hand. Yeah. That's super creepy. So it's not really a ghost story, but it's creepy. I mean, it's not a ghost story, but yeah, but that creepy. happened. It, it, I mean, the thing is nowadays it's a folklore, so there might have been some differences and stuff. Mm -hmm. Fact is there was blood. Fact is there was a severed finger or pieces of a finger. Mm -hmm. And she was a pre she was probably very lucky. She could have died mm -hmm. that night. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So what, what do you learn from that story? Always... <laughs> be the person who attacks <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> always have a knife what we learn from that story is that always there's an unfortunate knife. truth that it's still unsafe for women to be out alone at night. always have a knife or a gun or both or or a gun that throws knife or don't be someone who attacks women yes but also <laughs> Don't run around at night when it's dark. Yeah. Yeah. I would, when I was living in the US, I would carry mace in my purse all the time. What's mace? It's like a pepper herb. Spray. Oh, it's it like an herb. herb. You threw it's herb at the attacker. Spray. Stop it. It's mace. <laughs> it's pepper spray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then go to your last story. Okay. Um, do you do you believe in no ghosts? I mean, I told two ghost stories before, but, but that doesn't necessarily mean you believe in ghosts. It no, just I don't means believe in ghosts. That you had an experience. I had an experience, but I don't believe in ghosts. Really? No. Not at all. I believe in energy, and I believe that sometimes we all have energy, and sometimes maybe energy stays somewhere, or you know. Because, like, from a physical standpoint, if you have energy, energy just doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. 
it has to go somewhere or become something else. Mm -hmm. So I believe when someone dies and there's a lot of energy unresolved or just, yeah. you know, just sometimes maybe lingering. But That's you know, a good I, segue, actually. <laughs> I've been living next to a uh, graveyard my whole life and I have never had, like, I mean, t two times. <laughs> but other than that, never had any creepy ghost experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're hoping with energies and things lingering around um, is a good segue into okay. this story. Okay. So this story comes from, and please forgive me if I say your name wrong. Is I, it true? Is it, it is true. Okay. Um, her name, I'm assuming your pronouns are her, she, her. Um, if not, I will correct it in the next episode. Um, this comes from Nihal. Nihal. I'm really not sure how to say your name. I'm sorry. Um, and she also wrote me on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, and I believe she is 15. Mm -hmm. So she wrote me an email and I'm just going to read it. So <clears throat> I am writing to you, not specifically about mine, although it is, I'm just saying that it is kind of both of theirs. Um, but rather my brother's experience, as I think what happened with him was much more shocking or much more interesting to know about compared to my own experience. Mm -hmm. A little info about my brother. He is eight years older than me. He has been meditating since he was 14 or 15 and is deeply in love with spiritual practices. Since he has been doing these things from such a young age, obviously he has gained a bit of an ability to sense things around him. He can't say there is a ghost or something, but he can see, uh, sense negative energy. And of course, his positive aura can beat anything, uh, can beat that energy or simply scare it away. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of sensitive people can sense these things, including myself. So the story starts from the day we moved into our new house. And it's about that house, which they're currently living in still, by the way. Okay. As I already stated, my brother and I are very sensitive people. So from the first day we moved here, we literally used to joke around every day and say to our parents that there is some negative energy in this house. Living in this house, we never really felt like it was our home. There was always this discomfort, like I just wanted to leave. Even after believing that there was nothing here, I would still be so scared. I was even scared to just enter my room at night. I was literally obsessed with the topic of ghosts. People will usually say that when there's a negative spirit around you, you will feel cold. Although I can't say for sure that that has happened to me. The lights in our house did used to flicker a lot. A major difference after moving to this house was that we started having a lot of health issues. Any one of us needed to go to the hospital at least once a month. Oh, wow. We literally spend a large amount of our money on medical expenses. My mom used to say that she felt like something was on her legs when she was sleeping. She convinced herself that it was our dad and was able to ignore it. But now when she thinks of it, she's quite sure that it wasn't him. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. A lot of things came into our life, but the biggest one, a lot of changes, sorry. A lot of changes came into our life, but the biggest one was with me. My room was on the second floor. The stairs to the second floor are on the outside of the house. So it's basically separate from the downstairs. Oh, that's that alone is creepy. So right. you have to go through the outside to get to I, the second floor. Yeah, I can't tell if she means that it's literally on the outside of the house or on like the side of the house. So like her so, room is the only thing up there, you know? Still, so, yeah. super creepy. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically separate from the downstairs. My room is the weirdest room in this house. It had a lot of negative energy. So much so that my parents didn't even come in that room and would say they didn't feel at home there. Oh. Since I always wanted my own room, I would stay in there alone the entire day. She said that really affected my mental health in a really shitty way because I used to only have negative thoughts in there. I got really depressed. I started fighting with my parents, feeling like I hated the world, and even started having some suicidal thoughts. I don't know why, but I always thought that, th that this was some energy working on me, some negative energy that was causing all of it. 
The floor below me never had this much of a negative effect because my parents are really spiritual and being in an Indian household, you do a lot of spiritual practices every day. Mm -hmm. Those practices, I believe, really protected that floor, but not my room. I wanted my own room so badly, but every night when I tried to sleep in there, I used to get so damn scared. I just always had the fear that someone was watching me. I almost never switched off all the lights. I would lay in bed and sometimes chant some mantras, specifically, and again, forgive me if I say this wrong, Hanuman Chalisa, a mantra that pushes negative energy away from you. Mm -hmm. I think that this was the only reason that I was able to sleep in there. One day, my brother and I decided to watch The Conjuring. Great move. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say the whole thing gives me Conjuring yeah. vibes. And if you have not seen the movie, the first one is basically about the um, Amityville Horror House, Amityville House yeah. in State New York. Is it New York? Yeah, I think it's New York. Or Staten Island. And it's super creepy. Yeah. <laughs> she said, we literally shit our pants, but something really fascinated me about this paranormal topic. So I started watching a lot of videos about paranormal investigators. I saw a lot of different horror movies and they indirectly affected me in a really bad way. Now this feeling that something was around got to be too much. I couldn't sleep at night. The light fluctuation fluctuations in the house occurred way more often than before. I was having horrific dreams. I started having these visions, which I can't really describe, like a cloud-type figure. I was scared, and it was so tense, but at the same time, I was kind of fascinated at the idea of something coming to this side just to get my attention. Wait, just to clarify, mm -hmm. so this story is from her brother's... No, this is her still. Oh, this is her story. Her brother's okay. part is coming uh, okay. now, actually. Okay, okay. One night after I had an intense blow up with my parents, my brother told me that he noticed that things had been off with me lately. The same night, when we were all asleep, he was thinking about what the history of this place might be, what force could be actually affecting all of us without us knowing. With all of this thinking, he went into a deep meditative state. He said he felt like he left his body. That's insidious now. <laughs> okay. Um, just a few minutes into it, he heard the loud screams of a woman. She was crying Ooh. really loudly and was saying something. He wasn't able to make out what she was saying because the screaming was so loud. He said he began to lose his breath. He said he had the thought, I'm going to die today. He knows he wasn't dreaming because he was so conscious of everything around him. I still don't know how he came out of that state. He said he felt like he was fainting. Like he couldn't keep up with what was going on around him. And then he was just out. We went to see a saint. And the saint told us that he believes that because of my brother's dedication to meditation and his spirituality all of these years, that that's why he was able to get out of that state. He also told us about the place we are living. It was a very rural land and a very poor woman was living there. People came and forced her to leave because they were beginning to build housing in this area. Her home was taken from her, her rights were taken from her, and she was left with nothing, completely broken. He said that she died shortly after being forced from her home, but that her soul was in a lot of pain. He said that because we are sensitive to these energies, we may open ourselves up to experiences like this, and we need to be strong enough to get through them. After that, I began meditating a lot in my room. My brother even came into my room shortly after, and without knowing that I had started meditating, said that he felt the energy was much more positive than it had been before. Oh. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad story. <laughs> bad story. No, like negative. It's it, not a, it's the not story's a... so interesting because it starts off feeling so creepy. Yep. And so, like... First, you kind of feel like when she was telling me the stories, I or, or, like about what she was feeling, I was thinking more along the lines of depression and isolation. She's isolating herself in this room, mm -hmm. and so all of these things are happening. Like she is having all of these thoughts, but then as it shifts into the story where she's starting to like have visions of things, and she's starting to, you know, the light fluctuations are happening way more often than they normally w were before mm -hmm. 
Um, and that all of this negative energy seemed to be centered around her room. But then this experience that her brother had mm -hmm. <laughs> going into this state and all of the things that he heard only to find out that in exactly where they were in that area that this woman had been forced out of her home and lost everything and probably died because of that because she had no place to be to live mm -hmm. and that her soul was in pain uh, I mean energy attracts energy right mm -hmm. so if you feel negative if you feel down if you feel depressed I think that attracts that mm -hmm. so it's a spiral obviously and I think it's the opposite as well if you're positive you put positivity out there mm -hmm. you attract positivity 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 <laughs> yeah but it's a cool story it's an interesting story would be first of all the translation of saint i mean it's i don't know that it's a translation because she did she, she say heiliger no she wrote me in english oh she wrote you in english she's but she comes from an indian household so i don't know and she's okay. also 15 <laughs> okay sure so but a spiritual person and um, but what I guess her culture would call a saint. But is, are they like based in America or? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. Interesting story. Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to say that thanks to everybody who sent us things. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of, I got a lot, way more stuff uh, from people on Reddit, but it was mostly like just folklore and just mm -hmm. fairy tales, creepy fairy tales from yeah. Austria that are creepy as fuck but not like true stories um and i just want to say if you want to participate in a thing like that where we ask you guys and we do once in a while mm -hmm. on our instagram then please follow us on our instagrams and our main instagram for the podcast because we post things like that mm -hmm. sometimes we'll post polls or we'll post questions and yeah. you guys can answer them and then we share that on the podcast yeah and it's always fun it is always fun. Yeah. Um, and if you want some fun, creepy stories, um, I was actually remind. <clears throat> sorry, I was actually reminded by um, Rhett and Link from Good Mythical Morning on YouTube. Um, they were talking about creepy pastas, and. If you are not of our generation, you might not know what a creepy pasta is. I didn't know. It's not yeah, a thing that here. it was very popular in the U.S. and they were like really creepy stories where you weren't really sure. They were like internet folklore, mm -hmm. um, but you would like get them by in like an email or something, and it would be this creepy story. And always at the end of the story, there was like a picture of what they thought the her, like what the mm -hmm. attacker or whatever ghost looked like um and they were spine chilling stories they were so well done mm -hmm. uh and so if you're interested you can just look up creepy pastas and i'm sure you'll find some good ones that'll that'll creep you out it's a fun yeah. way to get scared <laughs> yeah that's it yeah if you like what you hear please consider subscribing following and rating the podcast I just quickly want to add, just because of that last story, if you are someone out there who is struggling with depression or suicidal thoughts or oh. um, just mental health in general, um, we will post um, a, a, a phone number for the U.S. and for Austria for like a, a helpline um, and maybe a website just because yep. there are some good websites that, that exactly deal with that. So it's always okay to ask for help. And I just want to make sure that that's out yeah, there. That's true. It's important. Again, again, if you like what you hear, please consider subscribing, following the podcast, and rating the podcast. If you want to, you know, participate or just read what we're up to. Follow us follow on us, Instagram. Follow us on our Instagram. And yeah, that's it. Watch out for ghost deer. <laughs> <laughs>